deaths in a week we are returning to the homelessness crisis. Marie from County Cork has been living in emergency accommodation for five months with her husband and two children. For 12 years she was renting in the private sector until her landlord told her he had to sell the house. Priced out of the rental market, Marie and her family became homeless. Over the past few months they've been moving from hostels to student in accommodation and currently are in a holiday home on a week by week basis. Marie shared our, her story with our reporter Jill Stedman. You have a whole new level of homelessness now where we're internally displaced citizens. We are refugees in our own country. We were forced from our homes uh, due to circumstances beyond our control. And now we find that the way things have progressed, the rental market is just absolutely unattainable. The mental stress and the strain that this situation had put on myself and my husband, you have to take a step back and think, what is this doing to our children? You know, we feel that we're victims in this, we're innocent, we didn't do anything wrong. It wasn't that we got evicted because we were in pain or because there was antisocial behaviour. We were model tenants. It's just how things progressed economically is what forced us into it. I said my teenage son has become absolutely withdrawn and he's an absolute shadow of himself. I have an eight-year-old girl who should have nothing on her mind except the fact that her Holy Communion is next May. And she's talking to me about homelessness, about what if we never get a home. I'm talking her in at night sometimes and she turned to me three weeks ago and she, we were in student accommodation at the time and it was quite tough because we had moved in five different apartments in the space of nine weeks and she just turned around so casually and, Mummy, I don't smile anymore. And I said, what do you mean, love? And, I don't know, I just, I used to smile all the time and I don't smile anymore like I used to. And choking back tears and uh, trying not to feel sorry for myself and parental guilt, I had to sit down and say, okay, honey, look, we're having a tough time and that's perfectly normal and it won't always be like this. And her response was, oh, no, everything is fine, mummy. I know you're doing the best you can, but I just can't figure out why I'm not smiling anymore. And, you know, for for a little girl who should have been out with her friends and playing and going on day trips and enjoying her summer, you know, this this is what is going on in her mind. She couldn't sleep the other night because she told me her brain was so full. And when I sat and spent time with her, she told me she's afraid that we'll never get a home. And now, what's it like for you as a parent hearing her say these things? It is absolutely gut-wrenching. I cannot... There, There is not words. And I, I actually feel emotional even having that question posed to me. It is... I'm absolutely helpless. And when, you know, all I can do is offer her comfort. And thank God we have such a good relationship that... She knows if mummy makes a promise, mummy will keep her promise and it's an instant comfort. So I just have to promise her that this won't last forever. We will have our forever home. Everything is going to be fine and we just have to stay strong as a family. But when you get to a point where you're feeling such despair yourself that you don't even believe your own words, it's very, very hard, you know? She actually turned around to me. She came to kiss me goodnight when the nine o'clock news was on. And there was actually um, a segment on the homeless figures. And her whole face lit up and she said, Mummy, I think everything might be okay. (laughs) And I said, why is that, sweetheart? And she said, look, they're talking about us on the telly. They were never doing that before. That means they're probably going to fix it. And... The fact that she's that in tune when I'm trying to protect her and pretend that everything is okay and trying to maintain 
as much normality as I can for it's it's indescribable and then you know when you're in bed yourself at night and you're trying to figure out what what will be the long term effects of this on our children and mine are only two of almost three thousand. That's a very, very scary thought. But I would urge all people to get involved in any way they can. We are the people behind the numbers and it's so offensive to be released as a statistic once a month you know I mean in my family every one of us four has a different story and a different experience and different hardship. And that was Marie from County Cork sharing her story with our reporter Jill Stebbin. Now